Hello everyone, and welcome to another Clash of Clans video. Today we're going to be looking at the WWL match between OneHive and Cream Esports. In the WWL, most matches are done with each clan taking 25 Talent 12s to the war uh, in an even breakdown. So that means OneHive got 18 Talent 12 triples, and Cream Esports got 8. So we're going to look at a couple of attacks today, starting off with Cebex on number 8. This is going to be a Queen Charge Lalo with a bunch of wall breakers. It's going to take out a lot of layers of walls. Starting off with the loons to funnel the queen to the right. And then he's going to try to break into the inferno compartment and the eagle compartment with his nine wall breakers. The first one is to test for small bombs. And then the next group is used to get into the base with help from the free spell on the inferno and expos. Wizard Towers these days don't destroy wall breakers in one hit, so you don't have to worry about making sure the queen tanks for the wall breakers anymore uh, if you're trying to break into a wizard tower, so that makes wall breaking a lot easier than it used to be. Now the queen is hung up on the hound, but if you caught it earlier, the wall breaker that broke open the storage wall uh, in the back by the air defense was actually affected by the tornado trap that was placed by the inferno tower but even though it was being pushed back it still broke open the wall with the elixir storage on it so that might be a little fun uh, clash trivia for you guys so the lalo's coming in from 12 o'clock right into the Inferno, and then it's going to go straight into the Town Hall. Raging right over the Town Hall, so the group of three or four loons over there are able to take out the Town Hall with ease uh, before the Warden ability wears off. The Queen is still alive at this point and taking advantage of the walls that the Slammer is still breaking open because it's still alive and the queen's going to take care of the rest of the base on her own. So that means she took out the eagle, two inferno towers, both sweepers, just a whole bunch of value with just her and her healers. Very nice attack, Suffix. Next we're going to see the Sui Lalo by Gaku, the takedown base number 14. Starts off with the funnel baby dragon loons and the king. It's going to create a huge funnel on this side because there's not very many air targeting defenses that are going to take down these balloons. And he's really trying to get that uh, gold storage and mortar combination. So he's spending a lot of loons on that. And he ends up getting it. So the idea here is to wall break into the eagle compartment and then send the queen directly onto the eagle and then hopefully she's going to grab the enemy queen and the air defense so it's looking good so far creating a huge funnel and hopefully the queen is just going to be able to be dropped right on the corner and get straight to the eagle artillery so the queen's walking straight in as planned Giant is going to grab the attention of the Expo, giving the Queen a little bit more health than she would have otherwise. So the Queen does her job, and now we can move on to the Lalo portion. Lalo's starting from 1 o'clock, going to be going counterclockwise around the base. Turns out it's a Hound and Baby Dragon CC. I'm just going to be able to poison that, and that's not going to be a huge problem for the attack. It's an amazing free spell taking care of the Wizard Tower and the Town Hall at the same time. I wasn't even sure that that was possible, really, because of the angle that the Wizard Tower is on. 
but he's just going to cover the rest of the base in spells because he has plenty of spells left. It's a really high value Sui there, and he takes care of the base. GG. Next, let's take a look at one of my attacks. It's going to be a Queen Charge Hog Attack on number 15. We're going to have a Baby Dragon and Loon for Funnel. Now the Stone Slammer takes out the Archer Tower, so that takes care of a lot of wall segments. So the Queen's going to be able to get into the base without any problems. The CC comes out now, and the Queen's going to take out the Hound under the Rage spell, so it's going to be super fast. Pups under the Poison spell are able to be taken out all at once, so that saves a little bit of time as well. Since I didn't need the King for the Funnel, we're going to be using him for a little bit of tanking and cleanup very early into the attack, starting at uh, 2 o'clock. So let's get your attention back to the Queen Charge. Using a Rage spell and a Free spell, you're able to take out both of the heroes under the Free spell. So the Queen still doesn't have to use the Queen ability. And at this point, the Hogs are placed... Uh, close to the Town Hall, so then using the Quake spell, we were able to activate the Town Hall and take it out under the Warden ability. So we have two heals for the rest of the base, and we still haven't used one. We're going to use it right over the Bomb Tower, and we're going to use a couple of Hogs on the Archer Tower to take that out before, before the Archer Tower distracts the pathing of the Hogs. Now we try to heal the healers, but... The air defense is just a little bit too strong, so we're not going to be able to get the healers healed up to uh, keep the hogs going. That's totally fine. We end on the Tesla farm, but we have lots of cleanup troops, and we have the king still at full health, uh, just walking along to uh, clean up the rest of the base. And finally, we're going to look at a drag bat attack by Emery. Emery has really done well in this meta because he's been he's been using the dragon attacks for a long time, and this time he's going to use drags and bats. So he starts off with a funnel at the 12 o'clock area, and then and E drags to funnel the dragons into the 2 o'clock area. He starts off with the dragons. He's going to place all the dragons down. Then he's going to place a Hound to distract the air defense. So that saves a lot of HP that would have otherwise attacked the dragons. So he uses the bats at 9 o'clock and freezes the Inferno and Wizard Tower. Unfortunately misses one of the freezes, but there's so many bats that it actually overwhelms the multi-target Inferno Tower. So yeah, that's the recap of the WWL war between One Hive and Cream Esports today. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something. Leave a like and I'll see you tomorrow. I'm Raze Gaming, and I'm out.